Jordan Strack, Jeff Smith, joining you once again for a preview of what will be an unbelievably exciting night later tonight on WTOL 11. Jordan, I'll tell you what, uh, over the last few weeks, as a former athlete, area athlete, both of us as former area athletes, we know how hyped up the athletes get for this kind of coverage. We know how hyped up the parents get for this kind of coverage. But we have got something really special building for tonight's 11 o'clock broadcast. Yeah, for sure. We're excited about it. We have, we'll have coverage of nine girls district semifinal basketball games from across our area. Um, it, it's exciting. I mean, all the, all the divisions going, uh, we will have our team, uh, Christy Kopanis and then our sports producer, Troy Gingrich out covering all of them. I'm, I'm, I'm praying it all goes off without a hitch. Christy, is, Christy herself is actually shooting four games tonight. So just to give you an idea how this works. Okay give you a little behind the scenes. So Chris, there's yeah. a five, there's a five 30 and a seven 30 start at Lake and central Catholic. So Christie's going to start at one five 30 game, shoot some highlights, go to the next five 30 game. Shoot up two eighty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She, she's going Lake to central right up two eighty, And then she's going to stay for the seven 30 start at the one game and then go to the other one. Hopefully it all goes off without a hitch and we're going to make it work. I've got total faith and confidence in her. <laughs> and then you've got Troy out there also hitting some of these games. You said, yeah, Troy's heading out to Paulding tonight. Um, that, that, to me, is one of the coolest stories. Um, the Napoleon girls are back at it. Remember last year, Napoleon and Notre Dame girls both, they, had, they were ready to go down to Columbus. They were ready for the state Final Four. Napoleon was actually just hours away from playing in the state Final Four, and they had a team that we thought could really win a state championship. They were that good. And they were in their hotel about to go to the arena when they got the call that everything was shut down. And they've got a, they've got a team that's really good again this year, and they think they can do they think they can duplicate that and make a run uh, to the state final four. So um, their their runs to uh, they're playing against Central Catholic tonight in Paulding. So it should be a lot of fun. We're, we're looking forward to all these really cool games. Jordan, one of the things I was really struck by this week, you got a chance to talk to both of those coaches. Your team got a chance to talk to both of those coaches, Napoleon and Notre Dame, and they both said something and I I'm, I'm sure you're picking up on what I'm talking about but they, they talked about these being different sorry I lost you there for a second Oh, that's all right no I'm sorry I was just saying they talked about these being very different teams than what they had last sure. year and they've got a, they've got to focus on it that way yeah for sure I, I think that I, I think that's the the important part of this is that listen these are totally a different identities they're just because you did it last year it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get back there. And I think that's the cool thing about both these teams is they have taken that approach where, you know, we, they had great runs, they had great teams, but these are different, these are different times. I, I talked to Travis Galloway from Notre Dame yesterday, actually. And he said that two of the seniors from last year's group talked to this year's group just last week about, you know, Hey, listen, that was done and over with. Now we have to flip the page and you have to go do it again. And, you know, in Notre Dame's case, they're kind of, it's kind of old hat for them. They've been down there seven times uh, since 2012, um, it, which is incredible. And they have a really, really good shot to go down once again this year. It's amazing. I think Miley Cyrus talked about the climb uh, at one point, if you'll recall. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I had that is that is probably the most unhip thing I could have said, but uh, that was just resounding. But you just said it. It is it is the toughest thing to get back to that point. And both of these teams have showed uh, the resiliency and the team leadership. Like you said, you've got a couple of seniors rallying the troops. Yeah, for sure. It, you know, Miley Cyrus is one of the great poets of our time, Jeff. Just, you know, it, it, it just resonates with all, with, with everybody. Uh, it doesn't matter your age or anything. Uh, but yeah, like that, that's the coolest thing is that, you know, it, like a girl down at Notre Dame uh, or at, at Napoleon, like Taylor Strock, who uh, had that unbelievable year. She was there as a junior and now she gets to go do it as a senior. And, and hopefully um, everything works out. I think the other, the other important thing is um, Olivia Sims from Notre Dame said this to me yesterday. She said, you know, with COVID, we're not sure exactly what's going to happen. It, this thing could, it could all end again. So they're all playing as hard as they possibly can, uh, knowing that they just don't know when their last game is going to be. So I think that's a, another uh, important part of this, is that they, they all understand that at any time, this whole thing could just be over. You know, I'm sure there's some appreciation you guys and your team is seeing as well when you're going out to cover these games, the, the parents uh, that are in the stands. And uh, how precious these moments are. 
Oh, for sure. I, and I think, you know, uh, we're actually running a story today uh, from Troy, our sports producer, and he mentions that in his packages. He said, um, you know, those parents last year, they watched their kid play for the final time and they didn't even know it. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, a, as a parent myself, like I appreciate every single, whether it's a dance recital, whether it's cheerleading, whether it's softball, whatever it is, um, you can appreciate that, you know, if this is, a, this is, could be the last time for, for all of those things. And, um, you know, I'm seeing myself just this year, like just little stuff, like this was supposed to be Kennedy's last year to have a daddy daughter dance uh, at Anthony Wayne. This is in fourth grade. It's the last year they do it before they go to the new building in fifth grade. And she's not going to get to do that. It's little things like that, that you're, you're learning. Um, and as a parent myself, you can appreciate um, what all these parents are going through. And I hope everybody's enjoying these final moments and, and everybody is staying safe so that we can get to those final moments. Absolutely. I also want to talk a little bit about now what we were just previewing there, folks, once again, joining us here on uh, social media, we were previewing talking about 11 o'clock tonight, WTOL 11 at 11. We have got just an unbelievable lineup with Jordan and the sports team at WTOL 11 to focus on these nine games that are happening around the area with heavy, heavy implications as far as the state tournament is concerned. However, it wouldn't be pre-March Madness uh, without talking about some last-second heroics, right, Jordan? Oh, for sure. At 5:30, uh, I've got I've got a couple of buzzer beaters from last night in the Elmwood game and in the Corey Rawson game. Both featured buzzer beaters that uh, essentially decided the outcome. Um, I, I say essentially because Corey Rawson that forced overtime. They went into they went to go win in overtime. So uh, just awesome, awesome stuff. That's what we love about tournament time. That that's what makes it so special. Is that you know it, it could be that last second and and just watching the the kids from those schools being able to celebrate. It was pretty cool last night, and uh, we'll have those coming up at 5.30. And I, as we let you go here today, Jordan, I know you got a lot to get to, but we did have an announcement this week that for the first time in a long time, we're not going to have the state championship game in Columbus, correct? Yeah, UD Arena in Dayton. It actually, it just worked out this year that the, because normally the NCAA tournament uh, would have the first four games down at UD Arena at the same time, so it, it just, it never worked out that way. Uh, because all of those first four games in the whole NCAA tournament is being held in the state of Indiana near Indianapolis, um, UD Arena just happens to be open. And I mean, you talk about an awesome venue. I, have you been to UD Arena? Yeah, it is. It is such a cool place. And uh, I was there when when uh, the University of Michigan actually played in the first four uh, a couple of years ago. And my gosh, what a cool place. And the kids are going to get to experience that. And I'm excited for all of them for sure. And, and I know a lot of uh, folks are also talking about March Madness here, getting closer to tournament time for the men's side of things, all taking place in the Indianapolis general area. And we've got Michigan, we've got Ohio State, even UT hoping to make a march. And I know, I know uh, BGSU, not, not out of the equation as far oh. as the MAC tournament is concerned either. Yeah, that, that's what's, what's so much fun right now is, I mean, Michigan and Ohio State are both going to be like one or two seeds. They both have really, I mean, you watch the game on, on WTOL on Sunday, like it was unbelievable. I mean, it's it, just amazing stuff. What a great game that was. And then, um, yeah, listen, Toledo and Bowling Green, I would not be shocked. I would not be shocked if either one of them won the MAC tournament. Bowling Green is starting to figure things out. They've won three in a row. They were the preseason pick. You know, maybe they're getting their mojo going at the exact right time of the year. So uh, we're, I'm looking forward to the MAC tournament. It's always one of my favorite weeks of the year. Absolutely. Keeping our fingers crossed, of course, that everything goes off without a hitch. Jordan, I can't wait to see you at 530, and I can't wait to see the team at 11 o'clock tonight with all of these highlights. Awesome. Can't wait, Jeff. Thank you so much.